It's, it, it's basically perfect. Well, it'll go on forever unless... It hits a... Yeah. Basically, it'll go on forever. So really, that, that 2.998 is just... Right. But you can get, you can get, look, in dry sand, for example, like you might get a dielectric of three, which could be, I mean, there's a calculation, I don't have it in my head, but you can get it, and maybe it's two meters, right? In three, it's maybe two meters. Um, yep. But, right, but, but, but so what this is saying is, look, if you have a 100, right, so it's a 100 megahertz antenna, okay? And... Um, so we'll do, uh, um, okay, there's a point, there's a 50, there are 50 cm, <coughs> 100 cm, right, uh, I'll, I'll scale it. Hundred, two hundred, three hundred. Right, so that means fifty is about here. Okay, these are in centimeters. Okay, you have a one hundred megahertz antenna. You're in Georgia clay. Okay, Georgia wet clay. This is your signal. This is your wavelength. Okay, that's your wavelength. Instead, let's say that you're in South Georgia, right, and you're in an RDP of 10, right? That's your wavelength. I'm going deeper. That's how you. It's well, well, it's longer. It's a longer wavelength, which will allow you to go deeper. Yeah. But you see, but you see the difference. Yeah. That's a yeah, huge I, I difference, that. right? Yeah. I mean, two cycles occur in the same distance in Georgia clay in the north versus sand in the south, yeah. right? Let's say that you're, um, you know, let's say you're in Florida, okay, and you actually have a, a dielectric of three, right? A, 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 an RDP of, of three, which is probably about two meters in wavelength, okay? So now, this is your signal. See what I'm saying? Yeah. So if you're in a great context in Florida that is an RDP of two or three, okay, that's what you get versus in northern Georgia, you're getting four <coughs> cycles of the same antenna wave in the same distance it's going to take for one cycle in perfect conditions in Florida. Right? You see what I'm saying? And so, so the point is, yes, it has to do with depth, but this is a major reason why it sees deeper. The other point, however, right, because people say, oh, well, Florida's great because the context is, is wonderful. The issue is, right, so think about it from this perspective now. Let's say you have a five inch pipe that's buried 12 inches below the surface. Okay? Same antenna, 100 megahertz. Florida versus northern Georgia. Right. I got you. You may not see that in Florida because you have a two-meter wavelength. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. It thing doesn't cycle one time until two meters. In northern Georgia, however, you're getting a full cycle from this 100 megahertz antenna in the first 50 centimeters. You see what I'm saying? And so in, the, in effect, you actually do have... So people will complain about the conditions up here. The next time someone complains to you about the clay, say, but I get better resolution. Right? They won't know what you're talking about, but you know what you're talking about now, right? Uh, so because in this RDP of, of 40, your 100 megahertz antenna is cycling in 50 centimeters, right? You actually can see smaller targets in shallow clay than you could in the same depth, but if you were in Florida, uh, same antenna. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. So that's the trade-off, is the resolution versus depth. Now, obviously, most of you want something like this, because generally it'll be good 
you know, for, for the majority of what we need. But if you really do have small targets, you actually have a more likely of a chance with a low frequency antenna. Even at 250 is pretty low, right? You have a better chance of seeing a smaller target shallow in Georgia clay than you might in perfect conditions Florida because the wavelength is going to be significantly different. Uh, make sense? Yeah. Yeah. Good question, though. I mean, uh, you know, it's, and, and this is uh, I mean, uh, I'm saying, right? And same thing, if you're shooting it through air, then technically this would be right, your wavelength in air. Right? So it's a significant right, difference. So yeah. air, um, sand, right? so if you say like dry sand, um, And a little wet, right? and then Georgia red clay. See on the mall, that's the way basically the wet soil, mall, you know, moderate and then dry. That's yep. what you did. That's how you you picked. The you wet. picked. You picked. You picked. It pre. You predid it. You predid it. And be honest, so we just pretty much kept it on the wet. Right. Right. A lot because it's low and everything. And then, right. Right. And it was still giving me the. Because the antenna, like I said, it changes yep. according to what you said. So if I set yep. wet soils, it got shallow. Right. Because if it's wet, what's happening? The same. Well, the, the RDP is going up if it's wet, <coughs> which means what's happening to your velocity? Faster or slower? It's uh, faster, right? It's slower. Slower. Uh, it's slower, right? Because the, the wetter the conditions, the slower the speed. Okay which means the more shallow. So if it's slower, that's why it put, your window could be the same, right? It might be, okay, we're gonna look at it for, you know, uh, whatever, 100 nanoseconds in two-way travel time. Well, the question is how deep is 100 nanoseconds in two-way travel time, right? If, it depends on how fast the wave is moving, right? If it's moving slow, then that 100 nanoseconds might be four meters. If it's moving really fast, right, it could be two meters. And so it's still the same time window that your GPR is looking at it, but it's going to make it more shallow if it's wetter, right? And right. it's, 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 it's estimating depth. That's all it's doing. You're saying we're in wet context. You put wet. It's assigning an RDP to it that may or may not be accurate. Right. Right? If it's right. truly wet, it'd probably be more accurate than if it was dry, but you're, it's, it's assigning – a generalized, okay, it's, you say it's wet soils, we're putting 25 as the RDP, and so that 25 for this frequency equals two meters, you know, whatever, whatever it is. You put dry, great, we're putting six RDP, and we'll estimate that it's four meters, right, or whatever, whatever the case may be. Now, what we're going to go over in the next one, which is relevant for both of you with the LMX100, is the hyperbola magic. Because you should only use those preset possible conditions if you can't hyperbola match. Because you always want to estimate depth if you can, but if you can hyperbola match, then that match is gonna give you what the exact RDP is at that spot. Now like you say, that could be different from here to here in the same lot. So sometimes what you might want to do, again, we'll talk about this more later, is do multiple hyperbola matches, then restart and say, here's my average velocity, and here's my RDP, my average RDP for the site, because it might be 10 here, 20 here, you know, 16 here, you know, what? that's pretty dramatic, but you understand what I'm saying, right? That's where it would be the mall with that, with, with the hyperbola. Right. Well, that's it's, probably why I'm getting better. Well, if you can estimate the speed based on the hyperbola, then you know the speed, right? And the way it does that, I'm getting ahead of myself again, is geometry, but we'll do that, we'll do that next one. Okay. All right. Any questions about this? Any other questions at all about... Any of the materials so far? Oh, no, no questions. Did you learn anything new in, in, in this part? Yes. 